Hello all, this is Death by Canon, and welcome to my Dad Studio quick tip of the day. Today we are going to talk about depth of field and how to use it in Dad Studio. The image I am using was done for a promotional image through for Simpatico Studio for Diva 3D on Renderosity and her character Sonya, and I'll put the link to that below. Now let's move into Dad Studio. get depth of field in Daz Studio, you'll want to have your camera selected. You can also select your camera in your cameras tab or in your parameters tab. Either way works. Once in this, these tabs, you'll want to select the camera button here, which will give you these options along the side. One of these being depth of field. You'll want to turn that on. As you can see viewing through your camera, because this is selected here, it really doesn't change anything. What you want to do when doing this is to be at a 90 degree angle from your actual camera view. I've already set this up in my perspective view. This will allow you to see the lines of your camera and what it is pointing at. As you can see now when I click depth of field, I get field plane lines of where my depth of field is. The focal distance is the next thing we want to focus on. Many times our focal distance will be something like this, sometimes completely off the screen. What we want to do is pull this into an area so that this green line, let me turn my IV off so you can see it better. This little tiny green line here is at the same alignment as the eyes or whatever item you want to be in the sharpest focus. I tend to do a lot of character studies and so I want my sharpest focus to be that character's eyes. I also, because my history of a portrait photographer, like really shallow depth of fields, so oftentimes the back of my head will be blurry or sometimes even my nose if I do a really, really shallow depth of field. But as I said, I tend to line up this green line with the eyes because that's where I want my sharpest area of focus. And turn my ivy back on so that comes on later. Um, and that's done by using your focal distance here. Now, the f-stop is how much blur you're going to view in your image. For this image, I had a very shallow depth of field, meaning that both the foreground, I had blur in both the foreground and my background image with just a little bit of focus around my character's face. You can increase or decrease your depth of field. Increasing it means you will have a wider area of focus and decreasing it gives you a narrow area of focus. The only area of focus is going to be between these two planes. Now to double check this, one way you can do this, I personally don't, I'm really comfortable with just doing this and, and then testing my, my um, views with my, pre, with my preview. Some people like this, um, to test it this other way that I'm going to show you. And to do that, we need to be, go to display, it's right above the camera option here and you need to be back in camera view. We're gonna scroll down here to the bottom where we get near depth of field plane visibility and far depth of field plane visibility. This is usually set very low and I want you to increase that so that you can really see this. Uh, near depth of field plane visibility. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling a little bit. We're gonna turn this on. What this is showing us is that everything in front of this white plane, here, that's what we turned up here, is gonna be blurry. The near depth of field plane, if we go back to our perspective view, is this first plane here, nearest the camera. So everything in front of that near plane is gonna be blurry. Behind it will be in focus up to the point where you hit the far plane. Now everything behind the far plane is blurry and in front of the far plane is in focus. 
So this is showing you when you turn the far plane on, everything behind the far plane, this is the far plane, is blurry. So this is going to let me know that these vines down here, uh, her body will gradually get blurrier and blurrier as it gets further away. But I know that her face is completely covered, is completely in focus. Every, her face has no white over it. I've got them both on now. Okay. And then when I turn this one on, it's letting me know that these will be blurry and behind it. I've confirmed that there's nothing sticking out. Like the tip of her nose isn't hanging out. So it was going to be in focus. So that is how you can check your depth of field. Real quick, I'll show you the results of using depth of field. This is the image rendered with depth of field. We can zoom in. These leaves here were the leaves that were in front of the near focal plane. The rocks, the bottom half of her torso and body, this is what was behind the far focal plane. Everything in focus fell, fell in between those two planes. And to see the separation you get in, in attention to your character that this draws, and also the ability to see depth, like you can tell looking at this that these leaves are closer to the eye. This area is further away. It's not all on the same plane. Where here, everything is in the same It looks like everything is in the same focal plane. There's no blur. There's no separation of distance. There's not the depth that using depth of field gives to you. So that is my lesson for today on depth of field in DAS Studio. Any comments or suggestions for future videos you can leave down below. Please subscribe. I'm hoping to put these, do these on every Monday and hopefully get them out by Tuesday. Thanks for stopping by and happy creating.